five, four, three, two, one, zero. Engines ignition, liftoff of the Falcon 9 and Dragon. 2020 begins a new era in human spaceflight. Astronauts will be launching from American soil again nearly nine years after the space shuttle's final mission. The launch vehicle is a familiar one, the Falcon 9. With 82 successful missions under its belt, the public has become accustomed to its spectacular launches and landings. For the first time, a crew will be on top of the booster in the new Crew Dragon V2. With people now on board, the stakes are much higher than before, and the world is watching. Rocket launches become important to people when, well, people are on board. We are all curious about what the astronauts are doing, feeling, and seeing in the moment leading up to this historic moment. I will attempt in this video to paint as full of a picture I can of launch day for the crew launching in a Dragon capsule. And this episode is sponsored by me. I need more dot space slash shop. If you want to help support me doing more of this type of storytelling, just pick up a shirt. It would really mean a lot, and I do try really hard to make shirt designs that I think people would like to wear around. So if you want to support more episodes like this, please consider buying a shirt from I need more dot space slash shop. Back to the episode. I've been able to put this detailed timeline together with the help of the folks at NASA who let me interview spaceflight veteran and backup crew member Chell Lindgren, who will later be flying on an operational Crew Dragon mission. He has undergone much of the same training as the astronauts for DM-1 and has had input in the development of the capsule. I've also resourced information in this timeline from the detailed Falcon 9 timelines on spaceflight101.com, publicly available interviews of other NASA astronauts assigned to the commercial crew program, the DM-1 launch and abort flights, dozens of articles from other sources, as well as relevant information from the shuttle program. The timing of this information or order of it may shift as a commercial crew program matures, but as where it stands now, these are the major highlights most people are unaware of. I may also have to sprinkle in some shuttle era footage to help display these steps, but I'm only showing them if it's exactly as what would be happening for the Crew Dragon astronauts. So let's dive in. Most NASA astronauts reside in the Houston, Texas area near Johnson Space Center, where they train for upcoming missions or are assigned to other projects. Two weeks prior to their mission, the astronauts and all ground crew who will interact with the crew in the days leading up to the launch enter a strict quarantine at their homes. They're under the supervision of the Vehicle Integration and Test Office Chief this entire time to ensure that they are meeting the quarantine and health standards required prior to the mission. Seven days prior to launch, the astronauts say goodbye to their friends and family and hop in a NASA Gulfstream jet located at Ellington Field Joint Reserve Base, which is about 15 minute drive from Johnson Space Center. The astronauts go skyward and fly to Kennedy Space Center. Upon landing at the shuttle landing facility, the crew is then transported to the Operations and Checkout Building, also known as the ONC Building, located on the southern end of Kennedy Space Center. From there, they have a no-frills hotel room-like space for their crew quarters in the days leading up to the launch in quarantine. Other people essential to the crew's preparation on the ground will also be in quarantine with them there. At this point, the crew has already done all the training required for the mission. Most of their time now will be occupied doing interviews with the media, staying up to date with officials and contractors, and going over procedures for the wide variety of scenarios they could encounter on the flight. This time is designed to be a low stress time for the crew, as they are about to embark on a dangerous and important journey. NASA and SpaceX need them at their best come go time. Launch day. At around T minus 10 hours, the crew is awoken and they prepare themselves to start the long day ahead. They are sent to get their final medical check with the flight surgeon. Here they address any final issues that they may have, but at this point, there really shouldn't be anything. They are then sent to breakfast, or lunch or dinner depending on the time of the launch, where they get to eat their last earthly meal prior to departure. The long-standing tradition is steak and eggs, but the crew can eat whatever they want as long as it will hold them, likely something high protein and easy on the stomach. There is also time built into this period for them to exercise if they so choose. Next, they're sent to a conference room around the corner for their first briefing on the status of the flight vehicle and the facility. In this scenario, this briefing is run by the SpaceX launch team. They notify the crew if any updates were made to the flight computer, the likelihood of a launch that day to due to any technical hurdles, and addressing any last second changes that could affect their timeline. After this briefing, members of the 45th Weather Squadron from nearby Patrick Air Force Base brief the crew on the weather forecast for that day and probabilities of the launch. 
In the hours leading up to the launch, the Weather Squadron will continue to send up weather balloons and aircraft to get readings for ground level winds, upper level winds, and other weather readings to ensure ground teams know how to prepare the vehicle and make sure it's a safe day to go to space. At about T-4 hours, the crew now leaves the supervision of the NASA's Vehicle Integration Test Office and they are handed over to the SpaceX team to begin suiting up. The crew goes back to their quarters to put on their undergarments and then comes back to the suit-up room, where technicians would make sure that the crew is properly suited up and ready to begin their mission. This is the same room that has been used for every crewed mission since the Apollo days. Once suited up, the technicians will bring the suits to full pressure to make sure they have good suit integrity and communication checks to ensure the microphone and headphones in the helmet are operating properly. This process from start to finish typically takes about 45 minutes. T minus three hours, 22 minutes. The crew goes down the ONC elevators and exits through their now famous double doors where they are greeted by the press. The crew will wave to them in front of their Tesla Model X's and then enter them with their support team. Typically with the crew is the chief of the astronaut office and other astronaut management. They'll be dropped off at the firing room, which is near the vehicle assembly building, so that they can be with launch control while the crew is on their way to the pad. T minus two hours, 55 minutes until launch. The crew arrives at the pad. They ride the elevator up to the 255 foot level of the fixed service structure, and then proceed up a flight of stairs in order to get to the crew access arm level. For context, this is the same level that the space shuttle's former gaseous oxygen vent arm was located. This is 70 feet higher than the shuttle crew access arm was, which was previously accessed at the 195 foot level of the tower prior to SpaceX's massive renovations of the pad. The crew proceeds to walk across the access arm where the pad team welcomes them in the white room. The pad team helps a crew ingress into the vehicle. They strap them into their seats and connect their umbilicals to the onboard life support, cooling, and communication systems. With the pad team still there, the crew will do initial communication checks with NASA's launch control and SpaceX's mission control in Hawthorne. Once communication is verified, the crew begins working down their checklist of turning on various systems in the Dragon capsule. Much of these things will be automated, but the crew will verify every system is operating nominally. This entire process is scripted, and they'll work through the script along with mission control and monitor the progress of the vehicle. T minus one hour, 55 minutes. The pad team closes the hatch and departs the tower and drives away to a safe distance. At this point, the crew is not flipping any switches or making any changes in Dragon. They are strapped in and watching the countdown just like the rest of us. T minus 42 minutes. The crew access arm moves away from the crew Dragon. T minus 37 minutes. The launch escape system is armed on Dragon. T minus 35 minutes. The launch director calls for a go, no go on propellant loading on the Falcon 9. T minus 34 minutes. The Falcon 9 tanks begin to fill with propellant and liquid oxygen. T minus seven minutes. We're getting close. The spacecraft moves to internal power. The engines have begun chilling, so the turbo pumps on board will be ready to handle the extremely cold rocket propellant and liquid oxygen. And at this point, the propellant tanks are nearly full. T minus five minutes. The strong back has pulled away from the booster as the tanks are now pressurized and the Falcon 9 can stand on its own. T minus three minutes. The Falcon 9's flight termination system is armed in the event that the Falcon 9 needs to be detonated for ground safety during flight. T minus one minute. The Falcon 9 flight computer takes over the countdown from launch control. T minus 45 seconds. The launch director does their final go no go check with their flight controllers to ensure the vehicle is ready for launch. T minus two seconds. The flight computer ignites the nine Merlin engines and checks them for last second anomalies. T minus zero seconds. The hold down clamps at the base of the booster release the Falcon 9 from the pad and the crew is off to space. Ignition, lift off. Whew. I hope you got as many goosebumps as I did after hearing this timeline. All rocket launches are a delicate domino effect especially with crew. Every step matters. If you want to continue this space conversation, you can follow me on Twitter. I am at TJ underscore Cooney. And if you would like to get this shirt and help support my channel, you can find this and many other designs at INeedMore.space slash shop. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something today and I hope you enjoy your flight. Okay, bye.